Good morning and welcome to the Manager Critic, uh, the live Q&A here in the uh, Facebook group. I'm Cheryl Andrews, I'm the founder of Step by Step Listening and also the um, administrator for this group. Um, so the subject today is don't take yourself so serious and the importance of being playful. So if someone's just joined me, please do let me know who you are, say hello. Um, one thing I want to say is a big shout out for Robbie um, Jerem, who is writing the most awesome book um, about called Flowers in the Window, um, who's on the writing challenge, and we're all setting our goals now, getting ready. So although this is the lovely thing, isn't it, about when you set yourself a goal or you set yourself a commitment, you get the community together. Karen and I are starting the writing challenge on Wednesday next week. The group's already there. People are already starting to talk about what they want to get out of it. So the, the, it, we say they get 31 days worth of cover, but actually you get cover the minute that you start committing to something. So today is all about committing to not taking yourself so seriously and being more playful with it. And because I put some words in the Facebook group, both Manager Critic and in our Writing Challenge group, Robbie was interested in something I was talking about being more playful and she's asked me to explore that today. And guess what? I have found myself really ignited. And um, the good thing about it is I know why, and I want to share that with you, because I truly believe that the reason why we, um, uh, the way we are as human beings is we have a dream or a thought in our head, we want to do it, we take some action, we get some kind of response or some feedback, I call it feedback, but you get a response or reaction to your um, thing that you've done, and that informs you whether what you're doing is working or not working. And if it says it's working, we get ignited and we do it again. And if we put it back out there and it gets it's working, we do it again. And that's where momentum comes from. That's where motivation comes from. That's where excitement comes from. But equally, we can put stuff out there and it doesn't get the response that we want. And it doesn't go as quickly as we thought it would, or it's not as fast, or it's not as fun. And if that feedback then comes back into our system, we can easily become demotivated. And um, one of the things I've been apologizing for is how long my videos are. Um, and that's because I've had feedback before that if people are too time poor, they haven't got time to listen to the videos. Um, and I was talking to Pam Obasa, and so she's all about um, storytelling for sales. And she was speaking at the Women's Business Club on Wednesday. It's one of the things I love about the Women's Business Club. It's my time to stop, my time to reflect. And I get someone speaking to me that I wasn't planning to speak. You know, I didn't know... I don't know them, it's someone new, they come with a new energy. And she said to me, um, why are you worried about the length of your videos? This is me driving her back to the train station, so I got some extra free time with her. And, um, and I said, well, because I've been told that, you know, the feedback is that you should keep it short because people haven't got time. And bear in mind, I'm, I do a lot about time management and um, doing more of what you love and ditching the critics that you can't. And she said, but... Facebook doesn't actually put your videos out to everybody else until about seven minutes in. So I'm like, oh, great. So my waffly story that I'm doing, actually the beginning, is great because it's just waiting for things to build up. So a couple of things here. I just realized I shut the window so that we would be um, quieter. I'm actually now starting to melt. So I'm going to just make sure I'm okay. I've also pulled a chair behind me, which means I'm going to trip myself up. So I'm going to move all that out of the way. I'm going to just open the window again. Um, if you're online, please tell me if the noise um, of traffic or children going back to schools outside gets on your nerves, let me know and we'll shut it again. So there's this feedback loop. Okay, We do something, we think something, we take action and we get response and then that's what keeps us motivated. But what happens when we get something, we don't get the response we expect? And this is the bit that I, um, uh, with clean language, what it taught me to do was to um, basically put the word, whatever it is, so I, what often with me was words, because people, that's, what's that poem that says, sticks and stones can break your bones, but words can never hurt you? Well, I'm someone that would be like, I'd hear that and I'd go, well, there must be something wrong with me then, because words do hurt me. I was that person um, where people would say to me, Cheryl, and I've had it this week actually, you overthink things, you overanalyze things. God, I'd hate to be in your head. You take things too seriously. Um, you need to just lighten up. You need to let it go of your head. In fact, actually, when we were at Silverstone, I was walking along, and there was these two chaps chatting, and I was just walking behind them, and I was ear-wigging and being nosy. And he was saying, well, to his mate, he's going, you just need to be more like me. Just let it go of your head. Now, in my head, I was like, that sounds like a really good idea. I would love 
to just let it go. Um, and there was another story that I was telling myself that if I just let it go, then I won't take caring about people seriously. I, I'd stop caring about people. I'd just start to be selfish. I'd start to ignore everybody else's needs. I wouldn't be thinking about what everybody else wanted, and I would just do what I want to do. And then that would mean that I wouldn't be getting hurt by everybody's opinions and thoughts and feelings. So I never really did change that. But what I did do, and this is the bit that I take you through in the book, is that um, book number one is manager critic from overwhelms clarity. And the process is to take you through being curious. So um, Robbie's asked me to talk about playful today. So I, what I've done, and Robbie, and I'm going to put this up so I hope this will help. I hope you read my writing. But I put the word playful, and what I will do is um, I'm just going to put the C up here just to make it a bit clearer. Um, so the first thing I do is with the C, with clean language, is ask questions. So the C is for curiosity. And so I ask questions like, where does playful come from? What happens just before playful? And then whatever that thing is, what happens in between playful and that thing? And then might do what happens. And so another good thing to do is you get post-it notes. If we, and we do this, don't we, Robbie, when we map out your books? So you can use the same process that we use to help people map their books out, to map their chapters out, is you, whatever word that you want more of in your life, or if there's a word that's been bothering you, um, that someone's described you as and you didn't like it. So if people say to me, I'm overthinking, I might put overthinking in there and go, so overthinking, that's like what? Where does it come from? And actually what I've realized is that the only time that feedback hurts me is if I perceive overthinking to be a negative. So I look at when overthinking or playful. Um, so there's times when playful can be not very helpful. Um, you know, people do want things to be taken more seriously. Um, there are times when overthinking isn't helpful, but there's times when it is really helpful. So I get my strength and solution detective hat on and I start looking for when is it a strength and then creating solutions for when it doesn't work for me or the client, whoever I'm working with. And so we've got playful as the subject today. Um, and I'd ask these questions and I'm going to do that with you in a moment. Um, but what I found um, this week is I came up with once you've got the questions and you model it out, um, Robbie, the next thing is looking at the language. So playful's like what? And I'd be looking at the words that I'm using. And um, this week we were talking about I talk about the power of and. And now most people when they're making decisions, um, they get stuck because it's like either or. Um, so they'll be going, well, I either write my book or I can be there for the family. Um, I'll either grow my business or I'll be there for the family. Um, I can either train and get fit or eat well or I can grow the business. It's like it's always an either or. Now, physically in the moment when you've got books out there that say focus on one thing, you, you know, multitasking is inefficient. Yes, in this moment, like this one minute right now, you might choose that this is the minute, this is the moment to be playful with the children. This might be the minute to be playful with the words or the book or the writing. So in chunks of time, you may well drill it down to one. But what I would say to you is um, it's always about having, and this is the attention part, the clarity process, it's about having that banner over the top. This is the total outcome. So, And it's finding words that work for you. And if you don't check what you mean by every word you've got in that sentence. So um, I'm trying to think what you said. Robbie, I think you were saying about um, I just I want to use your words. So you've got 41 days ahead of you, and you've got 10,000 words you want to write, um, and you've got kids, kids, kids. You love them, and you enjoy being playful with them, but you also need to balance out being the foster parent, managing their complex needs, and remembering you amongst all of that. And so, one of the things I would do, and this is um, is put. And so when the summer holidays and 41 days and complex and kids and playful and remembering you, that's like what? Because what we want to do, and if that's too big, then we'll, we'll get each one of them. So it's like this is a bit where you go into sort of the individual sections first. So when kids, if kids were just the way you'd like them to be, or that time with the kids this, this summer holiday, whichever way you your attention goes, if playful was just the way you'd like it to be, if 41 days of writing was just the way you'd like it to be. So you have to invest time to get clarity of what all of those things mean first. 
and then you will have what I call the overarching vision. It's like you, you may even create a vision board um, where you put pictures from magazines. You might create a playlist of music that basically encapsulates um, that this period of time, if it was just the way you'd like it to be, it'd be like what? And that's all under curiosity. That's all about asking questions. And then it is checking the language, the words that you're using. Are they working for you? So one of the words that stood out for me, because you want to be more playful, is that the word complex. When I heard it, and this is my map of the world, it's just my map of the world, um, what I'm, I'm hearing is that, I'm, and this is a story I make up when I'm working with you as a client, Bobby, is I'm hearing that you wanted to be playful. I think you've worked out you need to do 238 words per day, and you want to be there for all their complex needs. The word complex and playful, for me, and this is just my map of the world, complex felt heavy and playful felt light. And so I would be going, and when playful and complex, what kind of complex is that complex? And it's about, and when playful and complex, what would you like to have happen? And it might, and it is, and I don't know the answer, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but if that was me, it would be about how can I um, be playful about the complex? Um, and you'd ha you'll have a process. So the first thing is get all those languages. I'm going to spend a little bit of time on the word playful because I'm going to share my experiences this week and what I've been doing, and uh, hopefully that will help you. The A is about where your attention is. Um, so what can happen is we can fo focus all on what's working and not really give what's not working attention, and it tends to niggle away from us and we get a bit fed up. It, it, our insides keep pulling at us because we haven't ignored, we're not, well, we're ignoring what's not working. Um, or we can dwell on what's not working and not notice what is working or what has worked or what could work. So when it comes to attention, you're wanting a short period of time, Robbie, to be really, really effective. You've got 41 days. Is I would invite you to think about um, what has worked before over this sort of kind of thing when you're doing some holidays and working before. Um, what is working? And if it could be just the way you'd like it to be, it'd be like what? And then that's you giving what's working three different kinds of attention, past, present, and future. What hasn't worked in the past, what isn't working, and what might not work. So you've got past, present, and future, but you're focusing on the what's not working. And then what needs to happen for it to work better. And you may, you know, you might have to go back over past what needed to happen for it to work better before, what needs to happen for it to work better right now, and what would need, need to happen for it to work better in the future. And by actually expanding that over all those different attentions, what you're effectively doing is taking this, what could be a tight ball of wool, and you're tweezing it all out so that you've got more information, that your subconscious mind has brought it to the, the, the conscious mind so that you can consciously decide in the moment and you'll recognize what's going on. Reflection is the feedback. Now, the bit that I may not be able to train in this video right now is that one of the things I see happen with families and particularly, um, but also bosses and businesses, is that you set yourself a goal, particularly for summer holidays, and you want everyone to be happy. And the minute a child is unhappy or you feel unhappy, um, in fact, actually, um, bless her, Georgia, um, my, I love Georgia as well, she came with us to the Monet exhibition on Monday, and we, she got really hot, and she was um, tired, and, and she started to cry. And she said, oh, I've spoilt today. And I said to her, how could you sort of spoil today? You've cried for three minutes and we've been here for 11 hours. It's just three minutes of crying. You've, you've, you've expelled some energy. You've, you, you have no words to describe how exhausted you are. We've spent an hour and a half listening to audios, talking and discussing. So a sensory overload in the actual um, exhibition, uh, both Helen, myself, Georgia, we all said, oh, I felt this, I heard that. We've had a beautiful discussion, and I suspect as a, a young girl, it's just the same as I was doing, she was processing a huge amount of information, and the heat was really, really hot, and she said, oh, I've got a headache. So I just, what I hear and see when someone cries, or they get angry, or they get cross, before I used to feel that they were angry or cross with me, um, and I used to feel if I got angry or cross, I was you know, ruining it for other people, so I could re relate to what she was saying, but actually, it's about putting things back into perspective in terms of time. It might feel like the whole day has been ruined, but actually, it was two or three minutes. And so getting really clear 
in that moment about the reflection, the feedback, it would be very easy for me to take the feedback and go, yeah, the whole day's ruined, we haven't done anything, I can't keep you happy all day. Actually, no, she's just given me some feedback that right now she's got a headache and she's very hot. And so we sat down on a bench, but actually what she'd said, and by listening really carefully, she said, can we go and lay down on the grass? And Helen and I said, yeah, absolutely. And we found a bench that was in the shade and we both sat down, but she didn't feel any better. And I said, well, just listen to what you, your body said. It said lay down. So maybe your body needs to lay down, whereas ours as adults were quite happy to sit. But I said, I know that my body's better when I lay down. So we went and laid down on the grass. So I'm in the middle of the embankment um, gardens. Um, I'm doing yoga with um, Georgia to raise our feet up to get more blood back to our head because we've been processing lots and she's got a headache. We've drunk loads of water. I've given her a bit of a head massage. <clears throat> And in the past, I might have worried about what everybody else thought, but I had heard her say, can I go and lay down on the grass? And I believe that her body was telling her what she needed. Um, and so it's about me taking that information and going, OK, so what would I like to have happen? And it doesn't take me two minutes to go and help her. And she was completely relieved after that. Now, the thing with, with feedback is it's your choice how you respond to it, but you may have a pattern um, of not responding particularly well and we tend to be very autopilot so in terms of playful and um, Robbie and the, the summer holidays I just want to say to you that if it, the, the best thing I can do and I'm going to show you on my stop process in a moment is to be be willing to look for progress rather than perfection don't look for it being perfect look for, for, for change I talk about celebrating change quite a lot so in the I the, of the clarity process, we look about not being in drama. So rather than going, oh, you failed, you know, persecuting yourself or persecuting somebody else, it, exactly what happened with Georgia. She was giving herself a hard time that she'd ruined the day because she'd got upset. Um, hello, Mark. I wasn't expecting you to be on the like in the video. That surprised me that you working. Um, uh, is that if that's thrown me completely now anyone who doesn't know Mark's my husband so I didn't expect him to like the video um I'm completely thrown well my own I so I is about drama and checking what your intention is so that's why having a visual board or having a playlist that you perhaps you you look at every day or you listen to the music it'll remind you that your intention is to be playful your intention is to so I often work with an intention of clarity and confidence um, I also look at fun and fitness. So I have certain words. And for me, the words create an image for me in my head. So I don't need anything else other than that. But other people might need a visual representation outside or an auditory. I'm playing at the moment with using music because it's not something I've done before. But find a way of reminding yourself your intention. So if your intention is to have a playful time with writing and the kids through the summer holidays, uh, the 41 days, then have something that reminds you that that's your intention. And then if you notice that the feedback you're giving yourself or the feedback you're getting from anything else is taking you away from playful, then it is about T, which is trusting your own process. So if you don't know your process, sometimes it can hard to take you back to, um, uh, to, to ground yourself quite quickly. So you asked in your um, post, Robbie, I can't thank you enough for this. You've put here... Um, Oh, what did you put? Anything more you can share about clean language and managing your own state and being amazing? <laughs> I think that was a compliment to me, so I'm going to take that. I'm not always very good at doing that. That's one of my personal dozen tasks is accepting compliments and kindness from other human beings. Um, so I'm just going to stop and have that for a moment. And so my process, uh, the for managing my state is one to always know what it is I want so not losing sight of what my purpose and intention is um, and my purpose and intention generally as a whole is to show up as a, a really loving human being with kindness and generosity for others and to include that kindness and generosity for myself and if I get feedback from myself or other people that says I haven't achieved that then um, what used to happen when I took myself really seriously it was it would, it would destroy me it would pull me back into, I would feel useless, a bit like George was feeling actually on Monday, so before I could resonate with it. I would immediately feel it was my fault, I ruined everything, that I'm a waste of time, a waste of space. But my process now, and I've, I've modeled it out this week, was my stop process. And so I, first of all, the S is I share. 
So the first thing I do, if I, um, if I have something that hits me and it stops me from being in that playful state, it stops me from having fun, it stops me from feeling like I'm a really kind, generous person, um, I, I stop. Um, and the first thing I do is I share. Now, I might share that with myself in a journal. I might share that with my family. I might share that with my business network. Um, but what, I've, and what I will say to you is that when I share a process like this, what I'm always aware of is it can sound very simple, but it's taken me about, I would say probably the last four or five years. When I first had a difficult time, with, when my relationship with my daughter broke down in um, five years ago, and when Mark's heart attack 18 months ago, that's when I started to realize that the importance of making sure I had a big enough network because people would be busy. And if I needed to share and it wasn't a good time for them to listen, I needed other people I could ask. And so what I've done is I've made sure my network is big enough so that if something hits me. So this week I had a um, something that came into uh, my inbox that um, kind of threw me because there was words in there that my, I call them my trigger words. So I know my process, I know my pattern, I know exactly why those words bother me. I know they're, they're from a past story. And although I can see progress, I can see they're not impacting like they did before, there was still a little bit of I needed to share it. So I spoke to Karen, my business partner. Um, I spoke to my husband, I spoke to my son. Um, I spoke to um, uh, Helen Llewellyn, who's also um, my friend, a client, a collaboration partner for property development. And, but I was able to phone them all up and say to them or call them or spend time with them and say, look, I just need to download and share how I'm feeling. And I know what kind of listening I need because I know my process. And I say to them, I just need to express this to you. Um, I don't need you to do anything or be anything. Um, and I will share. And then if that starts to not be enough, I'll go, actually, can you ask me a question? Or can you tell me your feedback? What, what, does, what do you feel when I say those things? Because I've realized I'm, I need to know that I'm not going mad. If you think I'm being unreasonable, if you can see something I'm not seeing, can you tell me? So there's a sharing process that is, and the purpose of that sharing process is to acknowledge that I'm hurt, upset. So I've, I've said, um, I spoke to another, I had, I had three people I had to give feedback to this week about something they'd done that I didn't like. Um, and I don't like giving that kind of feedback, even no matter how much training I've done in it. So I did speak to several other people about how pissed off I was with these, this, this behavior, not with the person, with the behavior, and how frustrated I was with myself that I was not, because logically I knew why they did it, but it still was emotionally bothering me. Um, so I've shared that with people, and, and I do that to get the drama out. That is, when I've got fizz inside me, I make sure I've got somebody that I can talk to and go, Bleh. But I don't have to edit it. I don't have to sound pretty. I don't have to sound nice. I can just go, I'm really peed off with this. I'm not happy about that. And once I've said it, and I've been heard by another human being that will not judge me, will not correct me, will not try and make it better, won't tell me what I should be thinking, I'm overthinking, I don't mean, if they just let me share it, it goes. It's like that. But you have to pick your people up carefully. You, and that's what I'm hoping Manager Critic Group is going to become, is this lovely community where you know the people in this community are going to be people you could go, right, you put a comment and go, I need someone to talk to. It won't be me all the time, because I, I won't have the resources to do that. I'm one human being, so I cannot listen to that many people, but I can train you guys to listen to each other. And that's what I really want from this community, and that's what Karen and I want from um, the, the mastermind group we want to create for your author's journey. We want people to, we cannot be there for everybody, but we can train you to be there for each other. And that's, that's our vision and that's our hope. So what I say to you is you first of all share. The T was time to think. Um, and for me, that is just taking myself back into myself because you can go out and give it all to everybody else and you can get everybody else's opinion and sometimes that adds to the, the, the confusion. But actually, you need to be quiet inside as well. So there's a beautiful metaphor that a couple of clients have this week where they've got a bubble that includes everybody else, and then they have a bubble that just includes themselves. And I kind of see this a bit like a dance. If you keep the bubble out there, including everybody else's energy, everybody else's needs, everybody else's opinions, everybody else's thoughts, um, whilst that might be very playful, it's quite tiring. So if you imagine you're holding that like a boulder, 
if you remember, you have to take time in sometimes just to center yourself. So for me, um, the first thing I did was block everything out of my diary that didn't have to happen. Because the fact that I was in that overwhelmed state again meant that I needed time to think. So I blocked everything out that I didn't have to do. I had one task per day that I knew I had to get done. I showed up for my clients, I did my job well, I showed up for my networking and I was the best version of me. And in between, I had time to think, just to, to just be quiet. And I was talking to somebody in the group, I think it was Nikki, um, a few days ago, I've lost track of time. And I know that you, you're working really hard, you've got, you know, there's, um, you're working, looking after elderly parents, you've got teenagers, single mum, full-time job, um, lots going on, and you said there's no time to stop. And um, my suggestion for you was that, you know, if you're screeching from job to go and take care of parents, is when you get outside the, the house, you just stop for, even if it's 30 seconds, we do it now on the video, it's like, And just let, because the thing is with stuff, it creates an energy inside us. Our thoughts create our emotions. Our emotions are energy in motion. So it's like a fizzle. It's great when it's driving you forward. Not so great when it's driving you mad. You know, if, it's, if you're going around in circles rather than being able to process it, it can be really exhausting. And the quickest and easiest way I know is to have time to think. Now, what's interesting is that that time to think for me isn't the kind of um, going around in circles. Oh, well, they did this and they did that. So I'm not in, in the intention. I'm not in drama. Um, that time to think is um, trusting myself, checking in with my process, knowing what works for me. Now, if you've never done any of your processes, which is what we do on the Do Go Get or Ditch program, is we look at how you do you. So if I want to trust at my best, I know that I know how I want things to be. I know what works for me. And I know that my process is that I listen to the other people without judgment and find out what they want and what works for them. And then when I've got clarity of our two separate outcomes, I can create a bit in the middle that says, okay, so how can we both have that? How can we both achieve that? That's my trust process. Um, and then I, to, for that trust to build, I know that there is going to be a review period where we're going to check for progress. We're going to give feedback to each other, what's working, what's not working. And um, so we might measure that by something, like it might be more money in the bank account, it might be more time off, less headaches, whatever your measure is. But also sometimes there's that feeling where it just doesn't feel right. But I trust, I have to have with that relationship, that person, that they understand that we all do that as humans. We all use different words and we all mean different things by them and they don't always come out right. So you have to know your own process. So going back to you, Robbie, is if when you're playful with the children, you said you're really good at playful with the children, I would model out when you're playful at your best with the children, that's like what? So what's the first thing that happens? Then what happens? Then what happens? Find your process for playfulness for them because you're doing that externally. So that's like the, the big bubble. And then work out how you can bring that in for yourself because it's really under the T. We're really good at doing stuff for other people. We have a process to do it for other people, goal setting, you know, coaching. I help other people get clarity and confidence. But what I didn't learn until about three or four years ago was how to take that back in and take my own advice. It was writing my book that I realized what my process was when I helped other people. And then I was like, oh my gosh, I don't do that myself. So in terms of the book, I'm the second time around now I'm doing all about time I'm doing about decision making I'm learning not to beat myself up because I'm I know it's part of the process I know I'm going to write about what I do for my clients and then I'm going to go oh fuck up I'm not doing that myself but I'm playful now because I know I want to learn how to do it if I'm doing it for my clients and they're getting amazing results and living amazing lives and making loads of money and having lots of fun and all that stuff and I want the same then I have to take my own advice so I'm not going oh I should know better I'm not authentic I can't sell this stuff I've got evidence, I've got 350 clients who have done really amazing things, just because I haven't done it yet, all of it, I have done most of it, I haven't done all of it, that's not a sense of failure, that's just a case of the student becomes the teacher, that's part of the process, that's fine, no problem at all with that, love that, but I go, okay, I'm ready to learn again, I want to learn, so the T part is always about knowing the process, 
And I think I've talked about 100 different processes in that little story there. But we all have a process. And we're often really good at giving other people advice and telling them what they should do. And what I find is when I'm giving it out to other people, the best thing I can do is come back and go, okay, so I was saying to Georgia, for example, can't ruin the whole day, it's just two minutes. So I thought, right, that's a good bit of advice I've given her. So when I started having a tantrum at home in the evening when I was tired, you know, I would go to myself, actually, Sherry, you haven't ruined the whole day. You just had a couple of minutes, you've been too tired and exhausted. So I say to my family, instead of saying to them, and that brings us on to the why, instead of telling a story of going, I know I'm depressed again, I know I'm in overwhelm, I'm, I'll go to them. I just, I've reached that point again where I've realised um, too much going on outside I've got too many other people's thoughts and feelings and I'm at breaking point this was me four days ago five days ago I was just everything was bringing tears and I was exhausted and all it was is because I'd given a lot to lots of people and there was people really wanting me and I wanted to be there for them but I'd forgotten the stop process. I hadn't made time to think for myself. I, my meditation time had slipped out of the diary. My exercise had slipped out of the diary. So all my stuff that I do that grounds and centers me had gone. So that's why it wasn't working. So I shared with everybody how I was feeling. Um, I was open um, about, I was honest, but I was also open to um, feedback, open to opportunities. Um, and I just sat with it and then I've communicated them. And then the P is, um, plans progress so I said to them um I've kind of I'm telling them but I'm also telling myself that I'm going to just take the next week to to slow things down I'm going to put my attention on this and I and my coach I said to her I said right um I also um peer support in my mentoring group I've asked one of my team if they could coach me we're coaching each other each week and I said to her, I need to focus on one thing this week. And I gave her a list of about 30 things I needed to do to get my book ready, to do my online program. And then I realized that I said I wanted to do one thing. And it boiled down to the one thing I was going to focus on for this week was my health. That was going to be my primary. And so she gave me the example. So I'm going to focus on my health whilst looking after my clients, developing my business and supporting my family. And I changed the word from and to whilst. And that instantly gave me some relief. So I go, okay, that word works. So it, for me, the story you're telling yourself is um, if it's energizing you and it's working for you, it's fine. And this isn't about whether it's positive, negative, good or bad. Because I hate things like mood hoovers, although I was playing with mood hoover to move. Um, what was the other word I was trying with today? Mood hoover versus mood lifter or something. Um, because mood is simply part of being a human, isn't it? We have emotions. No emotion is a bad emotion. No word is negative or positive, but it, it's about how it, the story we tell ourselves. So if someone says you're, um, so one of the things that I, the story I don't, you know, I've got a story that if people give me feedback, you talk too long, Cheryl, you talk too much, you haven't given me any space. Um, when I hear that feedback, the story I tell myself is that I'm not a very nice person, that I'm really unkind, that I'm thoughtless, and I'm not liked. And then the impact on me is that I start to feel really sad. Um, and actually, what I want to have happen is to, to make things better. But that can get me in a bit of a cycle where I'm so busy looking after them that I forget to look after myself. And so it's always about the story that it's only, it's only a perception. So they've seen me talking, and for them in this moment, I was talking too much for that person. It doesn't mean I talk too much all of the time. It just in this moment for this person, it was too much. Um, and actually some of the feedback I had this way because I didn't put enough information in the email. And that, because I, I thought if I put too much waffle in, they won't like it. So I put less in it. And actually they felt that I hadn't really heard them because I, how could I have summarized it to such a short point? So I hadn't given them enough information to make them feel like I was listening. So the thing I know about stories is it's always going to be, um, is it conceptual? It's a context that it, you can edit yourself. You can rehearse the story you're going to say to somebody. You can really perfect what you want to say um, and you can carefully articulate it, edit it, put it out there. And if they have had lots of stuff going on, it won't land well. 
So you have to just go back to curiosity and go, okay, so what would I like to have happen? Language, you know, what's the triggers here? Where's my attention? You know, how can I use that feedback well? And it's just keep on updating that process. So you eventually tell yourself a story that is going to serve you and them. Um, you can't be everything to everybody all of the time, but you can be the best version of yourself. And that best version might involve tears, anger, frustration. It's not about being perfect all of the time. It's about being who you are and being open to the fact that some things will upset you and some things will bring you joy. Your choice is how long you stay in there. And I, I like the metaphor of a movie. If we put a movie on and it's sad all the way through and it's heartbreaking and it's the, we physically, as our energy will, will drain. So it requires a flow from, you know, acknowledging those emotions, moving into the joy. And it's, a, it's kind of an up and down. That's life. We're always going to have highs and lows from our emotions. That's just being human. You know, people die. We lose jobs. People get ill. There's accidents. It's unrealistic, unreasonable. It gets hot. You get tired. I mean, most of us that I know I'm talking to that um, in my work world, we're exhausted because nobody's really sleeping particularly well with the heat. So I'm getting up three or four times either to turn the air conditioner on or off or to open the window or shut it because it's got noisy. So my sleep patterns right now are disturbed. So it's quite reasonable that I'd be tired. That's called being human. What I can do is the best that I can do within that information right now. And it's about changing the story. Um, so hello, Michelle. You're a gorgeous lady. I know you've been working really hard on your story and you're doing such a fab job to support all the people in your network. And I'm so proud of you. So it's 36 minutes. I'm very excited. I know it's a long video, um, but I didn't do playful. So I'm going to quickly just do this with you. And maybe you, this will be fun for you, Michelle, hopefully. We're looking about being more playful, not taking ourselves so seriously. Um, so I'm going to answer the questions. Please join me, Michelle, as you're on live. If you can, type it in. So when playful, um, playful is like what? Um, the first image that comes to mind for me, playful is like being at the beach, bare feet, and running along and splashing and um, screeching and laughing and giggling and not worrying that I've been too loud or whatever because I know it's not about the volume but the the way that I'm being is exuberant it's exciting it's inviting and it's infectious and it's good for everybody that's playful for me that is absolutely um oh Michelle just put thanks to you Cheryl oh I'm learning to take compliments so I'm just going to take that on for a moment it's really weird so they kind of go here somewhere and I don't always um take them in so thank you um so playful is this beach that's where I can see sun glist. it's sandy which is really funny because I don't like sandy beaches I hate them in the knickers I hate the sandy knickers um but it's so that's really interesting in itself so it's playful and what happens just before playful so just before the beach is um I uh, I have I've packed up my bag I know I've made sure I've got enough water I've got enough food I've got a blanket I've got something to play with I've got my sun cream so basically I've done I've got everything organized in my head before playful all the things that could go wrong I know I've done the beach before so of course that's a bit easier because I know that I need sun cream I know I might need an umbrella I know I need, might need water I'd like a sort of ball to play with so it's something familiar so what I've realized about being playful is something that's not familiar is I need to not go too far from home or I need to be somewhere I can go and buy the resources or I can tap into resources, which is probably why the writing challenge works so well for people is because we can just jump in the group and ask if we suddenly get on this journey and realise we don't have something we need. Um, so being playful, it means I've done some preparation beforehand. Um, so that's plan to progress, is that I've thought about all the things that I really want for it to be great. So the, the ball, the frisbee, the picnic, the banquet, um, and then I've also thought about things that could go wrong, like being dehydrated and sun cream. So what happens before playful is I actually have some preparation. I, I have given it some thought about what I need and I have, a, 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 I have all the resources that I need to keep it a safe, playful area. Um, I've also gone to somewhere where I'm confident and happy. And actually, so there's, there's certain beaches I don't like going to, so I wouldn't go there. Um, so I'm also choosing the environments I spend my time in. Um, there are beaches where I love the water and I swim in it, and there's beaches I don't like the love water and I wouldn't swim in it. So um, I could still be playful on the edge, but I wouldn't be able to fully immerse myself in playful. I wouldn't 
dive into the water. So for me, there's a bit of preparation. If you've got any questions, Nisha, as you're online, I know it will help Robbie, who's coming back to watch this later. Um, what I would then do, so the question I've got here is, what happens in between preparation and playful? Um, the first thing that comes to mind is I communicate it to somebody else, the other people that are involved that's going to be impacted by it. So in order for me to get out of my overwhelm and my tears four or five days ago, I have now spoken to my husband and my son, and I've got two days next Thursday and Friday booked out where I'm going to do a silent retreat at home. So I probably will do some work, but I've blocked my diary out from no client work. I've realized I need more time for myself. I need to, to recall myself. We're going on holiday on the Sunday, and what I don't want is for Mark and I to be the whole of the time to be my download time. So I'll be downloading about stuff that's going in my head. I want to go there with an empty head and have a really peaceful, relaxing holiday. So, um, so the thing that happens before preparation and actual playful, so in this case, my actual holiday on Sunday, is I have communicated to everybody else when I'm not going to be available. So I've, I'm letting my clients know. I'm letting you guys know. I've spoken to Karen. Um, I've spoken to the people that I'm working with within my mastermind group. So I've put that I've put communicated with other people my attention and I've instead of just telling them that's what I'm doing, I'm asking them what the impact will be on them and are they okay with it? Does I'm asking questions like, this is what I'd like to have happen. This is the reason why it's really important to me and I really need it right now. But I want to check what's the impact on you. And there were some members in my family because originally I was gonna book the whole week out, the whole five days. Because uh, I just felt like I needed to stop and I had two weeks off because I can't remember the last time I had like completely two weeks off where I wasn't thinking about a client or a book or something. Um, but actually, there were some people in my life that really need my support right now. Um, and I don't want to not be there for them. So when I got down to it, one of my nights, I was really, really, I was talking to Mark about it when I was sharing. I said to him, I, I feel somebody had put a post in the group saying they're going on a 30 day um, yoga retreat. And I went, oh, God, that's my idea of heaven. And because he was worried about me, he said, well, how much would it cost for you to go? And I went, actually, that isn't really what I want. And when I got it boiled it right down, what I really, when I really listened, really took time to think about it, what I really needed was three days. So I've got Wednesday afternoon, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday morning, and I've got three days where I know that I'm going to get up and just do whatever my body, what my mind, what my feelings think. And I'm not talking to my husband and my son and they are going to sort their own food out. I'm only going to cook for myself. And they because that's that's what going on the writing retreat gave me in 2015. It was the first time I'd ever lived on my own. It's the first time I'd ever got up and cooked food, breakfast, and lunch for myself when I wanted to eat, how I wanted to eat, what I wanted to eat. I, it was the first time that I, I didn't I would I wash the dishes up when it suited me, not because I had um, clients coming in or the family coming home. I could be as messy as I wanted to be. And it was the first time I'd experienced um, not calibrating myself to please somebody else. And it was the best gift I ever had, which is why I love going back and helping Cameron to create that same environment for other people. And um, the, the, the thing for me is that I went and became a facilitator on the thing that was giving me that thing. So I now need to recreate that in my life. That's something I've got to be able to do more often. And I said to Mark, I need three days a month, every month, where I just take care of my own needs. And I can either pay to go on retreats or we have to, as a family, we can save that money and I have to work with you guys to see if you leave me alone. Now, we'll see if it works or not. And if it doesn't work, I will pay for a retreat because it, I know it's important to me. I know it's important to our relationships for me to do that. So what happens in between um, planning and playful is I communicate what I want. Um, and then it, uh, the question here is what happens just before that? Um, what happens just before planning is usually there's a trigger um, and generally speaking is um, I'll feel sad, uh, I'll feel um, tired, I might be irritable with somebody, I might cry, I might shout um, and I'll go into what I call go into drama, I'll go into victim, you know I'm not good enough, I'm not getting out, I'm not important. So there's a bit of self-talk about that. And I think the difference now with playfulness is that I don't stay there very long. I just go, oh, I'm here now. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go into the question, what would I like to have happen? Um, and if I've already taken time out on a regular basis to plan and I have my picture of my seaside beach and relaxing, then I, it doesn't take me long to work out what I want because I want to get back to that original plan that I've been working to for the year or that quarter or whatever I'm focusing on. That's why planning is so important. 
when you plan regularly and you have visuals representation of what you want regularly then when you hit these roadblocks you you can tune into it really quickly but if you haven't planned on a regular basis you when you're in a roadblock you've got to get out of the roadblock you then got to create a plan you got to do the visualization so it takes you longer whereas if you plan regularly it's it's a hook to get back to um, on a regular basis so for me what happens just before play um, all of this happens is that I've usually hit a roadblock and one of the things I know about my process the T is that I can usually take um, one or two knockbacks of things not going the way I expected them to go but if it's three or more and what I've noticed this time which is a progress which I'm going to celebrate with you <laughs> is that um, this time there were six things that went wrong or didn't go as I expected within five days and that's when I hit it I just went down um, and I'm okay I know that but before it used to be three so on this particular week I had an email I had a member of the family I had a friend friend in, in difficulties um, there was uh, uh, two contracts with clients cancelled um, so people have signed up said they want to do it and then said they didn't want to do it and I was like and what was the sixth thing? Oh, my weight. <laughs> I haven't lost any weight in July. So there were six things in five days where um, I had got feedback that I, um, that either where I thought I was going to go with my attention, the what work I was going to, how I was going to use my time, I was going to have to move it to help somebody that I didn't expect to have to help. Or um, where I thought I was going with the weight loss, it didn't happen. Or where I thought I was going with my bank account, it didn't happen. So it was like there was a change of where my attention needed to be and there were six things that went on just before and I know that what stops that from happening normally is that if I acknowledge stop share how I'm feeling in the moment every time the little ones come up but Mark and I've been really busy he's usually who I talk to there was loads of other stuff going on and we've just not had the resources or the time or the space for me to have processed all of it because I'd I think three of them came in on one day when I was on my own, so I didn't have, and I was back to back with clients, I hadn't had time to process it. So the main thing that happens is a, there's usually a whole load of things that happen that I didn't expect to happen, and I haven't physically had time in my diary to process it, um, and that's what I'm doing now. I've kind of set, I, I haven't processed all of them yet, but I've put a date in my diary to give myself some time on my own. So, um, so when playful, then what happens? <sighs> life's just so much easier it's just fun hello jenny welcome to the uk from the you've got a bit of indian weather here haven't you it's fab. so glad you're here um another inspiration a beautiful young mum who is just do you know what I, when i coach and work with you i just wish i could transport myself back and i could have you as my mummy mentor um for my children who are now um, 20 and 23 uh you're just a joy an absolute joy to to listen to and um, i'm so honored to be able to support you on your journey because you've got such a great vision and such a great way of uh, um supporting so many people um but that's it isn't it when i'm playful i can attract playful and when i get people in but i'm human so i don't stay playful all the time i don't have that energy all of the time um, because life is pants sometimes it throws stuff at us so there's a one question left on the sheet I'm gonna put it up so people can see if you want it but the last one is up here where does playful come from and just to answer your question um, Robbie one of the things about the clean language questions is we can you can ask questions of playful and it can be like what's so we've got the beach we can then so that's why I put the clarity process then we can look at the confidence so where does playful come you know um, what happens just before that's what I call process so you look at the sequence of events so what's the step-by-step -step process that happens for playful to happen so that's more of a logical mind so I've got the emotional mind with the imagery the feelings that you might have music you might it might feel like something it might sound like something but it's like what for you it might taste like a cake I don't know what it tastes like playful might be whatever it is for you as a person for me it's a sunny beach at the moment with um just running up and down the beach with bare feet and screaming and not worrying whether I'm being too loud or too noisy for anybody else. That's what it's like for me right now. And that might change. But then there's that bit where you look at the process. So that's much more where you're looking at um, where it is. And, but there's also that where does it come from? And the playful for me, I'm just going to answer the question. So, um, but when we do it in clean, 
we're looking at the source of that word and the meaning and the definition. And so playful for me, thank you, Robbie, because you've just given me a really, really powerful resource by asking me to share this this morning. Um, because one of the things I've been struggling with, with managing critic, with my business, blah, 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 is that I don't always know if these videos are, are of any value. And of course, they're taking up my time. They're taking up my thinking time. Um, they're taking me away from some family and friends who really, really, really need me right now. And I want to be there for them. They're taking me away from, I didn't, I've got my fitness gear on, so I look like I'm really organized, but I haven't done the exercise yet. Um, so I don't mind doing these as long as I know they're working. And because Robbie's actually asked me a question today, and I know it's about someone specific, and I can really channel what I'm saying, it's been really powerful for me. But to maintain this on a regular basis, I need to have you guys telling me what you want to hear from me. I'm happy to talk, as you might have gathered, uh, but I have to have a purpose. It has to be there. So playful for me, when I ask that question for me personally, um, well, there's two sources I've just realized. There's one that comes from here, um, and that's that in this case today is Robbie. Um, and it's really interesting, Robbie, because, oh, I'm going to have to get it out, because I had this note from you, Robbie, that when we worked, worked together, and I was thinking, shall I send it to her? Shall I write it down and send it to her? Um, or shall I, oh, what have I done with it? But basically, the words were, embrace, let it go. And they were just the words that on the piece of paper when I worked with you last, the last clarity retreat, and I was tidying the office on and came across them. Um, but it was about... The younger Robbie, oh, that's so serendipity. The younger Robbie, I think, was the next words under, who didn't worry about whatever pe what other people thought. And so you today, Robbie, have come in and you have said, I really need to know about that playfulness. Share, share it. And your, your playfulness, your, your curiosity, your interest, your, your enthusiasm, your engagement with me has meant I've come on, I've done... 51 minute video which is I don't know how many people have been bored their pants off by now and have been losing the will to live thinking I've got to get back to work but your engagements come in but when I ask myself the question that my playful where does that come from it comes from the three-year-old little girl who's in my dad's arms and he's looking at me and he's just there's unconditional love and somewhere along the lines of that journey with that relationship when he's got worried about me because I look like I'm worrying about people too much or I'm too sensitive to stuff, he has said things like, stop overthinking, you're too sensitive, you know, don't talk about the emotion, I don't do emotion, Cheryl. I have thought he didn't love me, and so I, I felt disconnected from him. Instead of realising, so I've got that photograph and I will put it in the post underneath, and that's the one I've been connecting with over the last year where I've been working on a year to love the whole of me. And it's that three-year-old who's in a little white dress. That's where this comes from. And if I, I don't think I should bore you with that today, unless you put a comment and say, yes, we want to know, Cheryl. Um, because it's, I feel like it's for my benefit. But that three-year-old girl, when I've done this facilitation, when I've had my time to think, when I've tuned into her, she is, she's got little chubby bits of skin. She's got a little tiny bracelet on. She's got a white lacy dress. She's got bleach blonde hair and she is perfect but somewhere between three and 50 I picked up all this feedback and I've internalized it and kept trying to change who I am so that other people would like me and they still didn't like me and in then people would say just be yourself in fact I had that that was one of the things I was processing this week they say be yourself and I said well being myself means I cry and I'm sensitive and it hurts me when other people hurt each other so but you don't like listening to me cry because that's too much for you and you can't handle me crying so you're you're telling me to be myself but really really what you're telling me is to be the version of myself that you can handle and then I'm always trying to work out who that self is so that other people can be okay with me and what I've realized is that is life. There are times and places where I can show up and be really fucking mad and angry and cross and think it's just not fair and I don't like that. And I can be that person, 
because I know that those people can listen to it, that it won't hurt them. But there are some people, if I speak like that, and my dad is one of them, it breaks his heart. So why would I do that to him? I wouldn't show up and um, be that person in front of him because it breaks his heart. I can see he is as sensitive as I am, even though he wouldn't like to admit it. If he sees me in pain, he it hurts him. So I don't go to him. That's why I do coaching. It's why I create networks. It's why I train other people to listen without being emotionally destroyed by somebody else's sadness because people need to be able to share their sadness and for it simply to be shared and gone. But if every time you try and get your sadness or your anger or your frustration out, someone caps it and says, stop doing that. Make yourself feel better because I can't cope listening to you. It hurts me to hear your pain. Then their pain never gets out. And it stays in, and I truly, truly believe that when it stays in, it manifests in physical illnesses and ailments, and we become stressed, and we become poorly, and our body shuts down. And then we just start this whole visual circle. And I truly believe from the bottom of my heart that we have to be able to listen to each other, whether we're happy or sad. And that it's but training ourselves to listen in a way that's going to be helpful for that person. And the, the thing is, we never know what's going to be helpful. We have to just listen, ask questions. And when they go, that's not really helpful, you're not listening properly, you, go, you have to kind of calibrate what kind of listening they need right now. And then you don't want to get behind, stuck behind the listening because you become the listener and then you haven't got a voice to tell them that that's not working for you. And so that is a constant cycle. And I know what works for me is I've got my support network that give me my space to um, be honest, to be authentic, to be angry, to be sad, to be completely joyous and overly emotional about how wonderful life really is. And then I can hold that space and it doesn't matter if the other person listens to me or not because I don't need them to hear me because I'm being heard. I'm being heard by enough people that I can hold that space. And writing my books, they, they allow me to hear me on a, a super, super, super level that I require less listening to from other people um, through that process that means I can be even more available to help other people um, and so I don't know if I've answered that question any feedback though any comments right now um, would be greatly appreciated uh, even if you can just share um, whether this has resonated with you um, whether it's helped you whether I've pushed a button you know if when I was crying did it make you feel uncomfortable what was the impact it's having on you um, because this is at the crux of it you know i'm okay those tears are just um a release of energy that's inside me that i have no language for sometimes um and it's complete joy because actually in this moment i i reconnected with how much my dad loves me and that it's not that he doesn't love me he just finds listening to sadness really hard um so it's you know i used to think when he didn't listen to me that he didn't love me, um, but it's separate. That's a skill. Listening is a skill. We're, we're born with the ability to hear, but we're, the actual skill to listening takes training. It's, it's like practicing. We teach the kids to walk. We teach the kids to talk, but we don't teach them to listen. They're naturally born, able to listen to themselves. And unfortunately, as parents and adults, we do undo that by telling them how to think and how to feel and what they should or shouldn't do instead of asking them questions so they can work out how they think and how they feel. Um, and so I'm enjoying my journey to get back to that three-year-old who shows up and isn't analysing what she wears uh, before she goes out. She just puts, you know, I mean, admittedly at three-year-olds, I would have got dressed, I wouldn't have dressed myself necessarily. Um, but her attention isn't on, do I look okay? Do people like what I look like? She is just being in the moment, um, which brings me actually to almost an hour. <clears throat> is that I was going to start the video today, apologising for being in my sports gear with having no makeup on, um, and so I've realised that actually I turned up with the energy of that three-year-old today. Um, and I want to thank you, Robbie. If you get to the end of this, that's great. I want to thank you because you showed up with your um, playful, young, vibrant Robbie, the energy of that. Um, I've, I've listened to you about your book and I can't wait for your book to come out. Um, 
that you know when I, I know that's the energy you came to me with today so my thing is I've shared my story and I hope it inspires and helps you but the real the real nuggets come when you tune into your own thinking because Robbie has the answers trust yourself you know more than you think so Jenny Michelle um, I'm not sure whether you're still online or whether you've just put comment and gone um, I can't see anything else on here so I'm going to love you and leave you um, those watching on replay um, yeah I've showed my heart but what I do need from you guys is during the weeks, um, coming weeks, I need you to put something in the group. Tell me what you want the live Q&A to be about. I need you to tell me what worked about this, what didn't work, what needs to work better. I need you to give me feedback um, because I will effectively just take time out for myself. If you don't tell me what you need and want right now for the next couple of weeks, um, I won't be in the group very much. Um, I do need to recall, I need to regroup myself. But the truth is, if you want something and you're telling me that you want to know about something I've got to share, that won't be tiring. That will be worth coming out of a silent retreat for, to do an hour to share with you my wisdom and then know I can listen back to it. That's helpful for me too, as well as you. So you're not burdening me by asking, you're actually inspiring me, you're helping me to be the best version of me by giving me time to go through my own processes and share them with you. So on that note, um, please, please tell me what you want the Q&A to be about next Friday. If I've had nothing in the group, um, I won't be here next Friday. If I've got something that's inspiring me, I will. And the reason for that is it takes me more brain power to try and guess what you want and what might be useful to you. Um, whereas if you tell me what you want, I'll always deliver. At least I hope so. And if something didn't work about the video, tell me about it. I don't mind. It won't crush me. Um, I'm more than happy to hear it and I will just take that into the next situation. The truth is right now that this video has been really powerful for me and I've learned a lot from about myself because some of the things I've shared with you I didn't know until I answered these questions in front of you. So it's new information for me and I'm really pleased with that. If you don't tell me what you're thinking and feeling, we can't calibrate to work together. Lots of love. Have an amazing summer, everybody. And um, let's have fun. Let's go play.